seen as a symbol of India's ambition to build its own fighter jet propulsion system has quietly resurfaced in recent months. A video released by DRDO showed the Kaveri derivative engine fitted with an afterburner, a component that wasn't part of the dry version previously intended for unmanned aircraft. This visual cue alone has sparked renewed interest and speculation about whether India is actively reworking the engine for manned fighter platforms despite its earlier delinking from the Tejas program. In jet engines, afterburners inject additional fuel into the exhaust stream after the turbine stage, igniting it to produce a sharp increase in thrust. This is especially useful during takeoff, combat maneuvers, or supersonic flight. The original Kaveri engine, which had struggled to meet the thrust and weight requirements for the Tejas light combat aircraft, was eventually shelved and repurposed in a dry configuration for subsonic platforms like the Ghatak UCAV. The dry version doesn't include an afterburner and is suitable for aircraft that don't require rapid acceleration or supersonic capability. So the reappearance of the engine with an afterburner attached is not just a technical adjustment, it's a shift in intent. It is believed that with the integration of an afterburner, the Kaveri derivative engine could potentially reach thrust levels in the range of 73 to 81 kilonewtons. For comparison, the GEF-404 engine currently powering the Tejas MK-1A delivers around 49.1 kN dry and 85.4 kN with afterburner. The Rafale uses the Snecma M88-2 engine, which produces approximately 50 kN dry and 75 kN with afterburner. The F-16, depending on the variant, could produce thrust output ranging from 71 to 76 kN dry and up to 129 kN with afterburner. The Su-30 MKI, India's twin-engine heavyweight fighter, uses the AL-31 FP engine, each delivering around 76.2 kN dry and 123 kN with afterburner. In this broader context, the Kaveri's projected performance places it within the lower thrust class suitable for lightweight fighters, but still within reach of operational relevance if further refinements succeed. GTRE, the lab behind the Kaveri program, is reportedly using older Tejas airframes from the limited series production batch to test the engine. These airframes provide a platform for evaluating how the engine behaves under realistic conditions. These trials will be crucial in determining whether the engine can transition from ground-based testing to operational deployment. The Kaveri engine itself is largely indigenous. Its core components, compressors, turbines and combustors were designed and manufactured in India. However, certain advanced technologies like single crystal turbine blades and high temperature alloys remain a challenge. These materials are essential for sustaining performance under extreme conditions and are part of what makes modern fighter engines so difficult to develop. To bridge this gap, India has entered into a partnership with Safron, a French aerospace company, to co-develop a next-generation fighter engine. This collaboration is expected to include full technology transfer, allowing India to master the manufacturing techniques and materials that have so far limited the Kaveri's progress. What's happening now isn't a dramatic relaunch of the Kaveri program, but a quiet evolution. The engine is being reimagined not just for one aircraft, but as a modular system that could serve multiple platforms.